my procrastination has finally shown its consequences. Hey, it's Ellie. Welcome back to my channel. And guess who finally watched Infinity Train? A couple of weeks after it was yoinked from existence. So, uh, you know, don't don't ask me how I watched it. So anyway, in lieu of, you know, everything going on, I thought I'd make a video about Infinity Train because I did watch it and I did love it. And I wanted to specifically talk about the world building of it all, as I think it is its greatest asset and probably the most unique thing about the show and what sets the show apart from like every other cartoon out there right now. So if at any time you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe because I make videos like this all the time and leave a comment down below of your favorite cartoon that got yoinked before it was done or before you feel like it should have been over. All right, let's just get into it. So Infinity Train originally aired in 2019 on Cartoon Network, which Saying that out loud is crazy because I could have sworn that Infinity Train came out the same year as Over the Garden Wall, which was 2014. 2014? Oh my God. No, because I thought Over the Garden Wall came out in like 2016 or something. God, I am so old. Oh, my sense of time is just beyond help at this point. But no, the show did come out in 2019 and I did watch it originally on TV when it aired. Um, and then I think they had to fight. Did they have to fight to get the second season? I know they had to fight to get the third season. The third season was a fight and it ended up on HBO Max and the fourth season also ended up on HBO Max and now it's nowhere. Anyway, the main thing that I really want to take away from the first season is how well it set up literally everything like this show and I will talk about this more towards the end of the video, but this show was made like it was made. <laughs> I know revolutionary no but i mean it was made as in like start to finish like they it is very obvious even from the first season that they had a storyline set up like all of the story like maybe they not didn't have everything cohesively together but they definitely had like a beginning middle end like they knew where the show was gonna go if they had the chance to tell their entire story and as we go on that is more and more obvious because there are some things that i think are loose ends but then i realize it's like no, they could have easily cleaned that up had they had another season. So season one was really great in like setting up these pieces that you didn't, you won't even really think about until you come back and rewatch it later like I did. The show follows a formula that is actually pretty easy to follow and replicate. Each season follows a passenger that gets on the train, they have a set number, they have to go through each car to learn a lesson and hopefully get their number down and then the season ends. That's like the basic premise of the show and it already in that basic premise, you already have so much uniqueness there because what, what who? Who was doing it like that? Who was doing it like the, the concept of the show itself is something I've like never seen before. And I think a lot of people never seen before, which is what makes Infinity Train actually so unique because of how like self-aware it is in its like concept. It is literally a train that is made to help humans through their problems. There's no like hiding it. There's no like, um, like subtlety to it. It's literally a train built to help humans through their problems you're supposed to become a better human at the end which already offers up a whole bunch of questions like who invented the train why is this person thinking that humanity needs help what is the end goal of like all of this of getting humanity its help it needs and the exploration that a lot of these characters go through is actually done also through companions or the denizens on the train of which is another really big question because a ongoing theme throughout all of this and one that I think that they were going to like actually talk about in the next season that would have been after book four is the whole thing with the denizens because the denizens have emotions but and yet they were creations created by the train so it's like do they deserve rights question <laughs> we also see the passengers on the train get attached to the denizens and vice versa the denizens getting attached to the point where some of these denizens literally have like mental breakdowns about the passengers being gone they can't live on one one is a great example of this in the train documentaries which is these little shorts that i believe were played during season between season one and season two because all throughout the like the episode it was like showing like i think uh alan dracula which is like the deer that makes no sense if you're like what the fuck the alan dracula and uh mt because she was spray painting everything like that gets shown more and more and more and then i think the apex are shown at the end of like the last train documentary so i think that's when the timeline of that was 
Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, the train documentaries also show one one clearly missing Tulip and clearly missing his friend, which he is technically a robot, not a denizen on the train because he is the conductor. So technically he's making all of it, which is also another question. Oh my God. But like, he's technically not a denizen. He's like, he's not a denizen, but he is going through the same type of emotions that denizens go through when they meet passengers. And that also like we'll get into that oh we'll get into that because i have i have theories i have theories but anyway yeah season one does a really good job of setting up all of these questions that you're like damn i really hope they explore this world more because the world is great the world the world is amazing speaking of one one while i don't believe he is the overall maker of the train because he calls the train his mother so i feel like there is still one step above one 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 is still extremely powerful and has a lot to do with the creation of the things on the train or at least he's meant to run the business of the train and yet he is still able to be taken over by amelia like there's no like the way that we are inferring that Amelia took over the train was she literally just took one one from his slot and just uh, tossed him onto another train car or something like that is what is inferred in like season one so it's like if that was that easy why hasn't anybody just done that before because it is also stated in book four jumping ahead a little that she was with the conductor for a good period of time and that there were humans before her so why has no one ever done that before like what makes Amelia so special, but maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's just her, her level of grief is what made her special. Maybe possibly. But speaking of the passengers, one of the biggest questions that I have that never got answered is do, does everybody remember the things that are happening to them after they get off the train? Because nobody mentions it. No one mentions the train after getting off of it. Aside from in book two in book two, Jesse and obviously MT, they get off the train together and they're telling their brother about what has happened. And so it makes me question, okay, like where in time does this exist? Because why did like Mingi and Ryan not say anything? Why did Tulip not say anything? Even if I become a better person at the end of this, I'm getting off that train and I'm going to the nearest news source and I'm being like, there's a train that is kidnapping people. Also, also, it is not really explained how long these people are on the train if that relates to real time in the real world because it's asked a lot during the seasons if hey does anybody notice that we're gone and like no one answers that except for in book two when jesse's little brother whose name i forget my bad he's sprig that's his name sprig <laughs> sprig asked jesse like where have you been like wh like where have you been loca <laughs> no but like seriously where has he been and so but we don't get a time frame like he could have just been gone for an hour and jesse's little brother could have not find him for that hour or he could have been gone for days there's no explanation we don't get to see anybody in the outside world's like a reaction to them being gone for a, an extended period of time so it makes me wonder were they even gone for that long because would it missing people posters and if that many people are going missing at once wouldn't people start to notice like hey we notice that people go missing for days or even years at a time and they eventually come back or sometimes they don't wouldn't that be like a worldwide epidemic wouldn't we all be concerned so i have a feeling that the like time frame isn't like as long as it is in the car is the same as it is in real life I have a feeling that's the way that it is. That was actually a tangent. That was not in my script, hold on. <laughs> but it's a real shame we'll never get the answers to that, huh? Anyway, I'm not here to complain <clears throat> yet. <clears throat> Uh, let's move on to book two. Maybe it's because of my original rewatch of this show about a week ago. I didn't rewatch book one because I didn't need to. I don't remember this show being this dark. Like, is that, am I crazy? I don't remember the show being this dark. And that, like, I know they talk about death and like real life, real world problems, but I don't remember the show being as dark as it was in season two. Already in book two, we get to see a breaking of the mold of the formula of the original thing with MT. MT is Tulip's reflection or lake, whatever you want to call it, is Tulip's reflection who decides she wants to go live her own life. Um, and she gets to do so, but she's getting chased down by the Chrome police because the Chrome police are like, no, you have to be here. And guess who doesn't care this entire time? One, one 
or the train. Now at this point, Amelia has is on her road to redemption and one one is getting back all of the stuff on the train. But even before Amelia even came, which was so, said in book four, there were issues on the train before. So what is going, like the whole thing with the Chrome Police and MT, like I feel like one one should have been aware of that, but it's not until the literally the last episode where he's like, hmm, wait a minute. Are you a person? Are you not a person? I'm gonna go through a moral conundrum real quick in my brain, in my AI brain. But like, had he not noticed that all of this was happening beforehand? Like someone was going around messing up train cars as we saw in the, the train documentaries and he kind of wasn't doing anything about it. And it's like, is it his job to do anything about it? And I guess you would never know if it was a passenger or like a denizen, but still you didn't wanna, like the apex existed for a pretty long time and like the train like did nothing about it. They're supposed to get off the train, but yet these kids were on the train for a very long time, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I And getting ahead of myself, I almost missed Jesse. Sweet baby himbo. Himbo in training. Bless his heart, bless his little heart, bro. Bless his heart. <laughs> but him and MT and Alan Dracula, they all become friends throughout the book, which is, Again, bringing up the question of the denizens and how are they, they're supposed to literally drop everything the second a passenger comes on the train. Most cars that you come across usually are like, we need to drop everything and help out this passenger, which is very interesting. But then it's also interesting that there are some cars that are like, oh no, we're just gonna kill you. I don't, I don't care for you. I don't know who you are and I don't care. And that is very interesting because if these denizens were all made by an AI, you would think that, yeah, they drop everything to go help the passenger, which we will explore more in book four. But with MT, obviously she's technically a denizen. It is brought up to her that like, well, how do you know you weren't just doing what you're supposed to do when you were helping out Tulip? Yeah, you wanted free will, but maybe in a way you were just helping out Tulip and that's what you were supposed to be doing the whole time. Now here with Jesse, you helped Jesse get off the train and come to his own and help him stand up for himself. Now he can get off the train. Who And you thought you were just doing all your free will this whole time, but who's to say that that wasn't just all a part of the plan? That you were not just literally programmed to do that yourself. And we get no real answer to that because yes mt gets to leave the train off of a technicality and off of like you know uh doing the little hand reflection thing but we never get to know fully if that is true and i think that's really nice that this kind of left up into interpretation because i'm like i'd like to think no <laughs> i'd like to think that it's a kind of a mix of both I personally like to think that the denizens were all AI created, but they are just getting more and more developed AI because these AI have to act like humans when humans come on the train. They have to have human emotions in order for the passengers to get through their human emotions. Because if you're just talking to a brick wall or robot, you're not gonna be able to get through your emotions like that. But if you're talking to someone who can emulate human emotions to the point of being human, then you can get through your own problems. So I think this AI, these denizens, this AI has just developed so much to the point where they're basically human now. They have free will. They have stuff they want to do on their own. Again, we'll get to that. But like MT is like the first and really biggest example of that. It's like, yeah, maybe like underlying she, sorry, I thought I hit the mute button. Underlying, she always wants to help like she, it's in her code, literally in her nature to always want to help, even though she has this like attitude or whatever, it is always within her nature to help out the passengers in one way or another. But she still is like coming into her own and developing her own personality and her own wants and needs because she's just, she's just developing that. At least that's my theory. That's my theory. I'll get a little bit more into that later. But then the question then becomes, so do these denizens have free will or is it all just pre-programmed stuff? I think the design of this show is one of the coolest things about the show. Just ever like the straight up design of it. It's like a design puzzle challenge because every car that they have to go through, you think about the sheer amount of cars that they went through in season one and season two and season three and season four, they each one of them had to be different. They had to be completely different. The level of creativity and design that must have took that every single car had to be different. And yeah, they could go back and like revisit old cars, but for the most part, especially if it's supposed to be catered towards different types of passengers, each car had to be really different and unique, which is why you get some crazy ass looking cars, which I think is really cool and unique. And it also talks about the like, why the, like the cars being made for passengers, but like 
you have to account for like literally every single type of problem every single type of personality that a person might have everything that a person might go through but that's why you end up with cars that maybe don't help a person that much but are still like really cool cars to see like there are times in each season where players players passengers go through each car but some of these cars aren't helpful to them some of these cars literally are just there and it's like yeah because it's not made for your problem specifically and i just thought that was really cool because it really kind of shows the infinityness of the infinity train <laughs> like these tra literally you have to account for every single combination of problems that a human might go through which is literally infinite you have to account for the types of problems they might have internally externally with other people with themselves with like the way that they look the way that they act you have to account for literally all of that and you have to make a train car for each every single one of their problems that's how an infinity train becomes an infinity train honestly and i think that's really cool i think the design of that is really cool and i know they had to work hard as fuck to make every train like car that is shown in the show like interesting and i think they did a really good job of that okay so we're at the end of season two now let's talk about the apex oh my god i've never wanted to punch children in the face more than i ever did with grace and simon in this season oh these hands are rated e for everyone i wanted to square up with them oh my god <laughs> just we'll get to them we'll get to them but for the most part in the sake of how it relates to mt and jesse i think that introducing the fact that there are people who are on the train for extended periods of time like long extended periods of time that's the first time we ever see other than like amelia someone who was on the train for an extended period of time when you know you're not supposed to and it's again we see this and we go how did you slip under the radar how does like one one not understand that you are literally going the opposite direction and no one has told you hey you're going in the opposite direction you're supposed to be going this way and you're going this way like no one is there to tell them which just relates back to the whole train being corrupt and that there are things going on on the train that shouldn't be going on and you know what the chrome police can catch these hands too goofballs goofballs absolute goofballs you chasing around a kid and for what you could have just let it go like at any point in time they could have just especially when a child keeps outsmarting you and if you want to talk about like oh you're just here to be on the train and help the passengers and blah 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 and you don't think for a second that's the reason why she keeps outrunning you is because mt keeps like getting with these passengers who also want to help her out and you don't want to put two and two together like hey maybe we should just let it go like dear, truly dearly, we should just let it go. And they didn't let it go. And where did that end you? Where did you end up dead, wheeled? And I was happy. I had never been so much happy. You didn't, ach you achieved nothing. You goofball. Ooh, I hated those characters so much. And I was like supposed to feel some type of sympathy for them, but there was no real sympathy reason given other than he just really wanted to catch her. But it was like, why? Like what, what is the reason? Why did you want to catch her so badly? You're just you're just an op you an op bruh and you got wheeled anyway watching the cop with the hat though die that that's when i talk about like oh i didn't know it would get this dark like i did not know we were rolling like that little did she know they were indeed rolling like that i think this season overall really accurately set the tone for the rest of the show like people always talk about like oh children's cartoons in their first season and then it's like children's cartoons in their last season and it's like really dark and scary it's like yeah yeah that's basically what in fucking infinity train was but even they just right off the bat they were like oh we getting a season two it's time to kick it up a notch and that's exactly what they did immediately started to question about what it means to be human they touched on it a little bit a little bit in the first season with amelia and having to move on with her life and blah 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 but uh the, 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 in season two they just straight up said mt are you a human do you think that you're human why do you think that you're human is it because you have emotions is it because you have free will do you have free will like they were just fucking throwing these shits at the wall and i'm just like getting hit watching i'm like jesus christ okay let's go down this is a children's show goddamn and, the, and then those themes don't do, they don't go away they just get amplified and amplified in the next season let's talk about season three <laughs> book three is about uh grace and simon who are the leaders of the ape ah sorry sorry <laughs> oh, i'm sorry i'm so sorry what did i I do that to myself grace who is the leader of the apex and simon who's a loser 
I'm sorry for all you Simon Simps out there, but this is a Simon hate board. I just, this is a Simon hate board. I do not like that man. And we will talk about it. But anyway, it follows them and they meet a girl named Hazel who is human at first they think that she's human and they want to bring her into the apex but she is being followed and helped out by a denizen named tuba who is a gorilla and they're just basically trying to get rid of tuba the whole time while trying to bring hazel on there but there's an obvious connection between tuba and hazel that's not going away anytime soon and that's pretty much like the whole season is them going through and learning lessons along the way they believe that their number is actually supposed to go up one one is the false conductor and that there's a real conductor that is supposed to be helping them out along the way and that all of the train cars are made for them and that is like one of the first off most important things because technically yeah the train cars are made for them but not in the way that you could just destroy them and do whatever you want but they're just like well no the train cars are made for me right so why can't i do whatever i want the crux of this season the whole overarching plot of this season is the nulls or the denizens and whether or not they are actually people or if they should be treated as such if it eats sleeps breathes and has emotions does it deserve rights? And book three is simultaneously my favorite season because of this and also is the season that sets up the most questions that again, will never get answered. Like I personally don't really like that we just get left with a cliffhanger with Hazel that Grace and Hazel never really get to make up. And maybe that's fine. It's fine if like that's a permanent consequence to Grace's actions. That's fine. I actually like permanent consequences in shows like this. So if that is a permanent consequence is that Hazel no longer trusts you, she no longer likes you, that you just, you, you, you gotta become a better person, but the shit that you've done is irreversible. Oh well, move on with your life, right? That's true because that happens sometimes even to children and they need to learn that you need to like grow up and move on from those situations, even though you already face the consequences and you're never gonna get anything good out of that situation. However, still with Hazel though, we are just given, oh, she's an anomaly and she could turn into a turtle. And I just immediately thought Kappa. And maybe I think that's what they were kind of like supposed to be. I think that she was like, that was her inspiration is that she was supposed to be a Kappa. But the turtle thing came from Amelia. Amelia shows up and is like, hey, you're uh, an anomaly that I made. And she was like, oh, I can study you. And she doesn't want to get rid of her, which I think is very important because I thought that's what I thought at the beginning. I thought she was going to get rid of her, but we never know. And I keep I and when I first watched it, I was like, well, that's just a loose end that they just never tied up is like what happened to Hazel. But I do believe that after season four, season five would have been an entire season dedicated to Amelia and everything going on with her and everything going on with the train. Like it may have even been the last season, but hey, I guess we'll never know. I guess we'll never know. Anyway, I still loved Hazel and I love that her addition into the show, which is a setup for season four. Like everything is so interconnected because her little, not cameo, but like the little seeds that they plant in our heads, storytelling, the seeds that they plant in your head through during season three, that all come into culmination during season four. And the fact that season four is a prequel there's a whole lot there but i loved hazel's character i loved her she was so cute <sighs> r.i.p harambe may she rest in peace um when hazel started singing i've i've said this before and i'll say it again but it's never a character's death that actually gets me like i'm not sobbing at that character dying i'm usually sobbing at the way the characters react you want to you want a good character death in a show or a book or like whatever make the other characters around them inconsolable make them all break down fucking crying they can't do nothing emotionless mo like just do that do that because when hazel started singing i was like tears falling down my face i'm I, i'm in my office bro i'm sitting at my little desk tears falling down my fucking face bro it's insane it's insanity <laughs> i also really liked that this was a pivotal moment for grace's character as in it kind of made her realize that this person was living breathing and while they weren't a person they had emotions and they deserved to have free will and they had free will and all that stuff and his pair in this I keep saying person, this gorilla was basically a mother to Hazel and Hazel just lost a mother. Like quite literally, Hazel just lost a parent figure. And like that means something. And that's like when the switch like turns in Grace's head and she's like, oh, like I think I've been wrong this whole time. And her uh, number has been going down this whole time. And then Simon comes into the picture. 
once again this is a simon hate club i'm so sorry if you like simon because i don't I, like I, I when I when I went on the Tumblr tag after all of this, and of course most of it was talking about the whole HBO Max thing. But when I got down to the actual like people talking about the show itself, I don't know if y'all liked Simon or not. Like I couldn't tell. So I'm just covering my bases. I'm sorry if you do. Fuck him. <laughs> Like Grace in this moment genuinely was able to realize that she cares for people way more than she cares about like whatever the heck is going on on this damn train. Something that that crusty ass cargo short wearing wet flopping bread ass looking ass Simon character he will never understand. And let me tell you fucking why. Even though she was misguided in her beliefs completely run by her own feelers oof wonder where we heard that one before she still cared for others she still cared for the apex she literally was their caretaker it didn't matter how crazy misguided she thought they were like hazel and she was also able to understand completely that hazel was a child a literal like six eight year old child like what the fact that simon had no he had no empathy that's what it was at the end of the day it was a matter of empathy she even though grace's like whole personality and her whole like uh, belief system was, I guess, misguided in her ways of what, whatever the fuck she was thinking about, right? Her whole belief system was misguided. She, because she had empathy, her belief system was able to be challenged in a way that didn't cause harm to other people. Whereas Simon, as Amelia said a lot, yo, hey, you, you always gotta be right, don't you? And that is your downfall, is that you always have to be right even when you're wrong. And we can talk about the real world implications of that and the dichotomy between these two all day long, because I don't know if they did it on purpose, but that scene in uh, Grace's real life when she was a kid, when she stole that bracelet from the jewelry store and she was sitting in the police station and her parents came in and her parents, yeah, they were mad at her, but they were also mad at the police. I like, I don't know if they did this on purpose, but it's like a thing, at least in, you know, in black culture, <laughs> where when you get in trouble for doing something like that and you end up at the police station you end up in trouble with the teacher at school the parents actually most of the time black parents will end up yelling at the like the office itself instead of yelling at you at least in public at least in public they will not yell at you but they'll yell at the office because it looks bad on them that you stole something it's like are you not well cared for and they even you can even hear it in the background they're saying like our daughter is well cared for she doesn't need to steal and blah 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 but you still gonna get the shit beat out of you when you get home but like it's it's a thing with black families i also like that her hair was straightened and or permed I like to lean towards permed because you know black experience was up I didn't I never got my hair permed anyway um and then as she's in the car it gets more and more natural because she, well, who the fuck is who the fuck is perming her hair you know what I mean anyway I don't know if that was intentional but I liked that dichotomy and we never get to see Simon's upbringing which I really wish that we could because one of the main things that like I said Amelia said is that he always has to be right and that he's lacking that empathy and even when his whole shit with the cat and the cat betraying him and whatever there is still something fundamentally lacking there and that only comes from like not being raised properly as a child why are you fundamentally lacking empathy to the point where you're seeing a child and like literally about you when when hazel says like he's gonna kill me we all believe it grace believes it everybody believes it everybody believes that if even though she's literally a fucking child he would kill her just because he's she's a fucking denizen and not a human being and that's where that like the empathy is gone men really killed a gorilla and thought we would all cheer thought we would all be like yay we're so happy you did that thought that hazel wouldn't be grieving someone who was essentially her mother empathy he is lacking empathy it's insane it's actually insane and i wanted to see and i know we never get his backstory because he ends up becoming roach ashes as he fucking should you fucking goofball but i still would have liked to see like what made you that way like he did deserve some sort of like did he deserve a redemption redemption arc i don't know i i don't know maybe it's possible but i feel like we could only see that if we saw his childhood and the infinity train crew really said it doesn't matter because they just fucking killed him and i was so happy i was so happy oh my god i was doing a little dance in my little seat 
because I was so fucking happy. It was crazy in the way that they killed him in front of some children. But like, hey, hey. Also the roaches. What the fuck? <laughs> the, ro the fucking roaches, bro. What is up with those goddamn roaches? Because you would think, I had a question. I was like, why did the roaches come after them? Because is it just you being outside for too long? Because we see in season one, when in season two, when MT and Tulip are off of the train, for like an extended period of time, the roaches come out and try to kill you. And so you think like, okay, you need to stay on the train. For your own safety, you need to stay on the train. But Grace and Simon, they stay on the train. They're on the train, technically. They're just outside. So why did the roaches then come after them? Like, I got questions about them roaches. Very interesting. Anyway, moving on. Uh, yeah, that was season three. So now we move on to the final season, which is season four or book four, which is a prequel. Right off the bat, Already, I was I was flabbergasted. I was like, a, a prequel, a prequel. Oh, like I was. I don't. I don't know why that made me so excited. And prequels. Okay, get prequels get such a bad rep. I'm gonna say this really quickly. Prequels get such a bad rep. Prequels can be done so well because it it gives us the world building and the lore that we always want. And boy, howdy, is this what this did? As soon as I saw Young Amelia, I was like it's a prequel <laughs> like i was i oh bro i was so happy anyway this follows to okay can we talk about this for a second people were talking about these two being twins like that was a real theory that people had back in the day are you are we joking like i thought it was well ag agreed upon that they were just soulmates and that's why they were there together is because they were actually just soulmates but people were like oh maybe they're twins and maybe they were like switched at birth type twins no, I think the the point of showing that they were that they were babies and that they knew each other since they were literal babies is to show how much they were fucking soulmates. I like am I am I am I tripping? Am I am I tripping? <laughs> like for real, am I tripping at that and thinking that the reason that that was shown was to show that they were soulmates from from the jump, from the womb. Well, not the same womb, but like you know what I mean. Like they were they've always been soulmates, which is why they were on the train together and had a connected number. Hi, so this is editing me a couple days later. Um, so I looked it up just to make sure that I wasn't going crazy about the whole like Mingi and Ryan like not being siblings. They're not siblings. I did not know, however, that it was a hotly debated topic on whether or not they were dating or like they liked each other. If it was romantic, like everywhere I looked, they're asking that question. Some people are saying, yeah, and some people are saying no. Like, I didn't know this was actual discourse. So in this, I just go along with the fact that they like each other. I am still of the firm belief that they are soulmates. And that was the point. Maybe platonic soulmates. I don't think so. But it's possible. Either way, soulmates. So, yeah. Just, I did not know that was a hotly debated topic. I just, I don't know. It just seems so obvious to me. And maybe that's just because nowadays with cartoons and stuff, like, we get a little bit more, like, it's in your face. Like, if a character is gay, it's, like, in your face. Like, not in your face like it's a bad thing. But, like, it's very obvious. Like, it's very, like, oh, I'm bisexual. I'm this. I'm that. Blah, blah, blah. Like, it's not, like, subtle anymore. Which is fine. I think that's good. I think that's fine. But I think now, looking back on older cartoons, even though this is only a year old. But who knows when they originally started making the season and especially having gone through years and years and years of Cartoon Network Disney Nickelodeon censorship uh just this just seems like the very subtle way of saying hey they're soulmates to me to me to me that's just me anyway back to the video this season immediately answers so many questions and then raises a hundred more. Like my question was how deep did the damage go that Amelia did to the train? Because we see in seasons one, two, and three that there are just things that are just wrong about the train. And we all assume that like, oh, it's from Amelia. Like because of her doing her little doodads, stuff just isn't right now on the train. Things are going haywire and not acting correctly. But then, but then a hand monster shows up. And you think to yourself, how did the hand monster show up? Why does the hand monster have human hands with numbers on them? Are those people dead? Or is it like Hazel and being an anomaly? 
Either way, that thing was created somehow, some way, not through Amelia. Because Amelia hasn't, at that point in the season, taken over the train yet. So she hasn't been trying to create things yet. And this thing very much so looks like it's been there for a while. Meaning that if Mingi was by himself, like actually by himself, and Ryan was not there, that man probably would have died. Because it is very clear that in that train car that there was no, like, denizen in it, which maybe there used to be, maybe, like, a person who's, like, leading them around the paintings because the whole point of that car right is for a person to see the bigger picture that like that, that's the lesson you're supposed to learn in the car too detail oriented sometimes you need to take a step back and look at the bigger picture and that's how you get the little dangly wind chime things to be in the right position to turn into the door it's very cool i like that a lot but no denizen needs to be there for that in fact it is very eerie and quiet in the fucking car and it's very scary, like it's actually very scary. And then the shadow monster hand thing is just there festering in this. And like, it again goes completely under the radar. Why would one one not notice that? Even at this point, one one is supposed to be at his peak right now. At least we assume that is supposed to be his peak. That he is supposed to like, have everything under control right now because it's before Amelia takes over the train. So why? is this going under his radar why does he not notice whatever the fuck this thing is and that just even leads to even more questions about the how long has the train actually been corrupt and obviously amelia just came and made things like a hundred times worse so many questions so many questions like i am a very firm believer that the next season was going to follow amelia from when she came onto the train her her entire conversation with one one and that she realizes maybe she asked one one because she says in season one she tried to ask one one to make her a car to give her i forgot the man's name but her husband back who died and Obviously, one one can't do that because he can't just create random humans like that. Like, I don't think he can do that. So she's like, okay, well, fuck it. I'll do this. Do it myself. She takes over the train. She takes over the train. She figures out how to do things. But it is very clear that there is something deeper, even more wrong there. That's what I think season five would have covered. And then we would have jumped forward to her trying to make amends and trying to find all the anomalies that she made. And as she does, maybe she finds this hand monster. And this hand monster is, she realizes, isn't one of her anomalies. Anomalies. like she did not make this hand monster which dives deeper into the fact that there is more going on on the train that is slipping under one one's radar and the train's radar altogether like there is something deeply corrupt going on in the train she just made it worse and maybe this connects everything together about the denizens developing more and more free will and sometimes maybe that development these denizens go through isn't necessarily always to become a person like mt or lake but rather to become these nasty amalgamations who just want humans they're trying to become human but in like the worst way possible by just like taking human shit like hands and shit like to me i feel like that's where all of this was leading all of these questions to especially amelia being in multiple seasons and oh honestly she's been in all the seasons i think was she no no was she in season two i don't remember amelia being in season two maybe she was but she was in like most of the seasons to the point where it's very obvious that we need a season dedicated to her at some point i guess we'll never know well, as much as I could sit here for another like 45 minutes and rant about how much greedy capitalist corporations are actually killing society, I feel like it's already been talked about to death and everything that I wanted to say, people have already said in videos. So that's why I wanted to focus more on the show and a celebration of the show's life. And maybe, who knows, down the line, maybe we'll get a comic book series. Like I know Adventure Time uh, kind of continued. I don't know if they're canon or not, but like Adventure Time did have a comic book series that kind of like, continued after the fact i know steve i think steven universe did as well a couple of different cartoon shows like had i don't know if they were canon but they did have their own little comic series that had a little run like physical comic series so i think it would be cool i don't know how they would have to get the the intellectual rights to it all to actually make these comic books but if they can't actually make another season i would love to see it i think it would work really well in comic book form as well so who knows maybe that's that's an idea <laughs> I think this is a good idea because it's clear that the story is already there. Like, look at this screenshot from season one. That these bitches don't come in until season two. Like, at the end of season two and into season three. Like, it is clear that this show was planned from the beginning. They had a story. They had a setup. They had a beginning, middle, and end. And it is a shame that they will never get to see it through. At least in the way that it was originally intended. God, I hope... I uh, Comic books need to come through. They need to come through. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. 
I don't know, go watch the show, go support the creators. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. If you did, you're a real one because you're here. Follow me on all my social medias down below. Maybe I'll watch the show before it gets canceled this time. No promises. Anyway, comment down below, like anything you liked about this video, about the show, about what shows you think were gone before their prime and what shows you want me to watch next. I'm always looking for new cartoons and new shows. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.